Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all awesome admins joining us from all over the world to talk about the Summer 16 release. My name is Leanne Templeman, and I'm an admin evangelist here at Salesforce. I'm focused entirely on working with you, our admin community. I'm joined by the amazing Mike Gerholt, who many of you may know. Mike's the leader of admin evangelism here at Salesforce, and I'm so excited to have him on the webinar so we can share our favorite parts of the Summer 16 release for admins. Before we can talk about the technology, it's important that everyone joining this webinar understands our forward-looking statement. On our ad admin webinars, we do like to share features coming up in future releases or features that may be in beta or pilot. So please note that all purchasing decisions regarding Salesforce should be based on features that are generally available today. We love our admin community and we want to connect with you on social. So please follow us for all admin news on Twitter here at Salesforce Admins. Note that there is no I in admins. And use the tag hashtag awesomeadmin to connect with the admin community. We're also on Facebook at Salesforce Admins. And this webinar recording, as well as all of our other awesome admin webinars, can be found at our YouTube channel, Salesforce Admins. We will be covering lots of new technology today. And if you have any questions about this webinar, about our demos, the technology we're showing, or anything else related to this webinar, please post your question on our success community group, Salesforce Admin Webinars. We will be taking questions at the end of this webinar, and we also have our admin team on hand to answer questions on the success group throughout the course of the webinar. So Mike, what are we talking about today? Thanks, Leanne. We have a jam-packed agenda uh, that we're going to cover for this webinar. So we're going to kick off with a little review on release best practices for our new admins and our experienced admins. We're also going to cover some of the productivity features that I think admins are going to absolutely love. And of course, it wouldn't be Summer 16 if we didn't talk about all the cool stuff we could customize and build, not to mention our favorite feature, Process Builder is getting some updates that Leanne, I think you're going to cover. And of course, we wouldn't leave you just high and dry. We want to make sure that you have all the resources you have. So we're going to cover some really great release resources for you. And then the fun part of our webinar is where we do the live Q&A. So let's get started on some quick release best practices for Salesforce admins. So the first step is, if we're taking notes, uh, here's four quick bullet points on planning ahead for Salesforce releases. And this will help you for the summer release and it'll also help you for the upcoming releases. And the first one is plan ahead and get a pre-release org. This is a way for you to have a nice safe environment to check out the new features in the release uh, and demo those to users as well. Of course, reading the release notes is, is key and we've got some tips on those. Uh, as you can see with Salesforce A, whether you're on the go, you're stuck on a train, maybe you're grabbing a quick bite over a sandwich, you can read release notes and kind of walk through them in bite-sized form without printing off all 400 pages. But we need to get through the release notes. Of course, it's fun to watch Release Readiness Live where we can hear from product managers and some of the features that they've been working on. And finally, we should, as admins, sit down and do a quick review of the sandboxes we have and what our developers are working on and figure out our refresh schedule so that they can be working on the newest code base. But in addition to that, I know we talk a lot about release notes, so I want to say, you know, what are release notes and how do we get through those release notes? So release notes are our way of communicating change to you about what's coming, new upcoming features, what's in that release, including the addition, the availability, and the setup, so that you can understand those release, that information, those features, and the impact to your users. And of course, all of our release notes are located at releasenotes.docs.salesforce.com. Now, the really cool thing as an admin and as anybody in our community is that you can have a direct impact in our releases and that's through the idea exchange. So the idea exchange allows you to post ideas that you have for features you would love to see in upcoming releases and if somebody has already posted that idea you can vote on it and comment. 
So this is a great way for you to participate in new upcoming releases and really have an impact on what Salesforce releases. So you can participate at success.salesforce.com backslash idea search. Okay, so we've got our best practices down for reading release notes and our punch list, and maybe we've thought of some ideas so we can participate that way. So let's jump into summer 16 with the productivity features that I believe admins are just absolutely going to love. And the first one we're going to start off with is contacts with multiple accounts. So I can't hear everybody on the other end of the webinar, but I promise there's a lot of cheering and clapping going on because I think this is a feature that is absolutely phenomenal. So as you can see here uh, in this example, we have John Amos, who is a contact in our system, and he's a direct contact to global media, but he's also associated to Acme as an influencer. That's his role. So with contacts on multiple accounts, we eliminate the need for duplicates, and we can capture, capture those unique relationships um, because I think we can see that we've all worked with many contacts that have access to accounts. We can view current and past relationships so that we can help connect the dots, and this feature is available in both Salesforce Lightning and in Salesforce Classic. Now, I want to show you how we set that up because this is also new in Summer 16, is we go into our account settings. So in account settings, uh, we actually enable this feature, which means the feature when it's released in Summer 16 is an admin enabled feature. So if you're practicing your essential habits for a Salesforce admin, this is a good chance for you to talk about SABWA so you can ad adequately communicate this to your users. But once we enable this feature, we can choose what happens to contacts when accounts are deleted and when a primary record is changed. So these are great conversations to have with your organization. Now, in addition to all of the changes on contacts and to multiple accounts, we also have a really cool feature that I think salespeople and especially marketing people are going to love, which is the create a calendar from anything feature. So with create a calendar from anything, we can use any standard or custom object to create a calendar and display information based on date fields that you select. So if you're a salesperson, maybe you want to view all of your opportunities closing in a calendar visualization. Or if you're a marketing person and you want to view all your campaigns, in a calendar, this is a great way for you to release calendars for your users and a great visualization. I think this really adds to the productivity that admins can deliver for their users. This feature is available in Salesforce Lightning, which is really cool. Now, moving forward, one of the things I used to have to do is create a custom visual tab or a web tab back in the day, and I did this to keep my users in Salesforce, but also deliver information. So what could be an overlooked feature in Summer 16 is the ability to find all the news with a click. And with news, it actually pulls in dynamically based on the information you viewed recently on accounts and opportunities. So this will help your salespeople stay in Salesforce longer and still stay up to date on different accounts and what's going on with them in the news. But Leanne, that's not all of the productivity features we have in Summer 16. Isn't there more? There's even more. So those productivities are big wins for admins driving adoption and data quality of their companies. But there's even more features available for admins that have users on Salesforce One and have users on mobile. So news, which you just mentioned, is available on Salesforce One and Lightning. And we also have some additional updates in Summer 16. Now, while Salesforce One features often don't require much setup or administration for administrators, it's really important to stay on top of the new ways your mobile users can engage with your apps on Salesforce. This is useful for any admin with mobile users, but especially for those that are looking to drive mobile adoption and usage within their organization. So these are a few of the Salesforce One features we have in Summer 16. A more insight into opportunities and accounts. So we have account insights, which are in Salesforce Lightning, which give you real-time news about particular accounts. But that information is now brought into Salesforce Mobile for accounts and for opportunities related to those accounts. So really giving your mobile users a, a 
good overall view of what's going on with that opportunity. There's more detail and clarity around related lists without having to tap through multiple screens so you can see um, what's included or how many records are related uh, to uh, an account, for example. And there's enhancements to the ways that your mobile users can update, search, and view data. So I really encourage all of you admins out there, if you're, if you're increasing mobile adoption, if you have mobile users, if you're looking to roll out mobile, stay on top of those Salesforce One features, even though they don't require a lot of administration, um, because it's really great for you to be able to market those internally to your users. And there's more in this release. So if you're an admin on Salesforce Classic, um, it's important to know that with every release, Salesforce is making more of those classic features that you know and love available in Salesforce Lightning. So there's a handful of those features we know you've been waiting for in Lightning, and while this list is not exhaustive for the features from Classic that are going to be available in Lightning this summer, it's important to know that now you can use tools you love like Opportunity and Count Teams in Lightning. You have the ability to preview related lists in Lightning. Those of you who are collaborating in Classic around dashboards and reports, that ability is now available in Lightning as well. And you can build those dashboards with the report charts that you're already familiar with and using in Classic, as well as all the enhanced Lightning dashboard capability. Now, for those of you who have already rolled out Lightning or are getting ready to roll out Lightning, here are a few of the new features that are only available in Lightning, as well as more that Mike has mentioned and we'll talk about throughout the webinar. So some exciting features that are only available in Lightning are opportunity insights. So those insights that I mentioned and that Mike talked about that we're using on accounts, um, having those details being brought onto the opportunity page to give your sales users real-time insight to their opportunities on the screen that they're working on. Company autofill. I am super excited about company autofill. It's leveraging data.com information to provide all of those pieces of information for companies that really shouldn't be additional data entry for your end users. So address and website and phone number. When your users are entering information into Salesforce, they'll automatically see options that are available that might match the company that they're looking for, and those fields will be automatically populated. Now, while this is an end user feature, this is something that is admin enabled, and it's also a really big win for end user usability by decreasing the need for data entry, and also an increase in data quality, um, reducing the you know, number of duplicate accounts, and increasing the data quality of the information that is there. Now, with that company autofill, we also have account logos, which is in beta. And account logos, um, if there's a logo available for that account, it'll be populated. So that's available on mobile and in Lightning. So it gives your users visual reference for those accounts they're working with. And if you're using Notes in Lightning, Notes was rolled out with Lightning uh, last year, and it's a way within your Lightning experience for your users or for you, admins, to write down information, to take outlines, notes, right within your Lightning experience. And now those can be shared as well. So if you're writing maybe an outline for an account plan or a campaign, you can share those with other users right within the Lightning experience. So these are a few of the Lightning-specific features available in Summer 16, but Mike, there are even more ways for our admins to customize and build using Lightning in Summer 16. There is, and it's a very cool feature that I know ranked really high on the Idea Exchange when we rolled out Lightning, and that is the ability to set custom home pages. So with Summer 16, now as an admin, you can create and edit new home pages with the Lightning App Builder, which means Every day as you're sitting down with a user, collecting user stories and practicing Savoy, you can find out what users by profile you need to set up a home page for. So not everybody now has to view account insights, especially if you're not in sales. This allows you to drag in different things like report charts, filtered lists, or even some rich text to allow for that home page to really be uh, useful for that user. But in addition to setting custom home pages, Leanne, we can customize even more, can't we? Absolutely. So that is so exciting. I mean, that might used to require tons of code, visual force, maybe hiring a developer, installing an app exchange app. And that power of using drag and drop customization is available now in summer to admins throughout their entire Lightning environment with the ability to also customize record pages. 
So using that drag and drop interface, admins can modify the look of all record pages, chatter groups, custom object pages. This is a huge win for admin customization for the ability to bring customized user experiences to your company. And even more, there's also now a button in Lightning on your object page that will take you right to the object detail for that, ob that object in setup. So, say you're building a custom experience for end users and you're modifying the page using that drag and drop um, builder that we just saw, you also can quickly navigate to the object page and add fields or edit existing fields or, or change the actual data that's included in that page. So it really gives admins a lot of tools within Lightning to customize the end user experience with limited clicks and limited code. So, these are really exciting, but let's go ahead and take a look at what this looks like. So I switched here to my Lightning environment and the Lightning admin, and I'm on my home page. And the first thing that I want to do is enable some of those cool features that Mike mentioned around how we deal with accounts. So I'm going to go to Lightning Setup Home. Now we have this page in Setup called Account Settings. And in account settings, you know, when we talk about release features, some features are turned on by default, some features require admin enablement. Account autofill, account logos, and multiple accounts per a contact are all admin enabled features. So as an admin, you have the ability to turn, if you're in classic, then um, some of these won't be available to you. If you're in lightning, then they're all available. Um, you have the ability to turn this on for end users. So we've turned this on. We also can see we have options around determining what happens and the behavior of those accounts. So once we've turned those on, let's go ahead and take a look at what that experience is for our end users. So if we go to accounts, the first feature I want to highlight is the experience of adding a new account. So if we're adding an account, you know, an account or a sales user might be out in the field or they might be on their laptop adding an account using this new account tool. But since we have account filters turned on, or um, account lookups turned on, we have the ability to say, OK, here's the Whole Foods that we want to add. right? Or if we were to look for other accounts that are available to us, we can automatically populate some of those fields like address, like website, like phone number. And the users do have the ability to change it if it doesn't match exactly what they're looking for or what they want to add. But they can go ahead and click Save. And again, that's a big win for removing data entry as well as increasing data quality. Now, we did enable the ability to have multiple contacts or multiple accounts per contact. I do want to show you um, exactly what that looks like for admins to turn on. So because that's a new feature that we enabled, we're going to actually edit the page because we need to add that to the page layout. It does show up as a related list, and it is something that, as an admin, we add to the page layout. Now, even if you've turned on Lightning, you can still access the page layout right from this panel here when you're in the page editor. So I'm going to go ahead and click on my page layout and add that related list. Now, for admins that are in Classic, you would just go to the Edit Page link in your um, account page to access this page layout editor. So we're in our page layout editor for accounts, and we have our related lists that are available. And I have a new related list that's available called related contacts. Let me go ahead and save that there. Now if we go back to our contact or our account, We can start to add. Oops, we can start to add contacts that are related to that account. So I'm going to refresh my page here. But what we can do is we can add if there's existing contacts. So maybe we now want to add Google as a potential account in our Salesforce because we met someone who's a consultant there. So we're going to add that as a relationship because it's someone that we're already working with at. Our organization. So they're already in Salesforce, but we don't want to have duplicate contacts. So we're going to add Bob as maybe an influencer at Google. And so he has a relationship now with both of those accounts, and we're able to do that without you know, creating data duplication. Now, 
one of the features we're most excited about is customizing that home page. So we have this beautiful Lightning home page that is very sales centric. So the Lightning homepage comes, this is the standard Lightning homepage for your users. It comes with a quarterly performance chart, an assistant that is bubbling up, would be bubbling up leads and opportunities, but we're not a sales user. Let's imagine that we're customizing this for a marketing user. They have different needs than our sales users, and that's why the ability to customize this is important. So we're going to click Edit Page from that Lightning homepage, and I see all of my standard options that are available to me, and we're going to add a few of those. So one that's important to me is a filter list. I want to look at all of my recent campaigns. This is a this is a um, a homepage that we're building for our marketing users. So I'd like to see all of my campaigns right up at the top here on the right hand side. Now we also have some charts that we've built. So we have the ability to add the standard component for report charts as well. And this again is specific for. Let's see, there we go. This is specific for marketing users, so I'm going to include my campaign report. We'll say campaign success. Include that campaign report. Now, finally, our marketing users need to be able to plan upcoming events and have some insight into where the opportunities are, even though they're not sales users. So we're going to drag and drop this heat map so they have that insight as they're building out future campaign plans of where those activities have been. We're going to go ahead and click Activate here, and I can assign to specific. Oops. I actually already saved this for marketing users, so it'll tell me that I'm saving for marketing users. There we go. So once these changes have been saved for my marketing users, if I go back and I save this for my system admin users and marketing users, so we can see it in this demo and it's rolled out to all of our marketing users. We refresh our page, we've got that new customized home page experience that we were able to deliver for users based on what they need to see when they first log in. There we go. So we've got this great report chart that came from the Salesforce Labs group on AppExchange. This is actually a free heat map component that's available, as well as a chart that I've built specifically for our campaign, our marketing users, and they have insight into all of their top campaigns on a filtered list. Now, let's take a look at what else is coming in summer. Process Builder. Process Builder is our favorite automation tool. It has changed the way that admins can automate their business in Salesforce with clicks and not code. And Process Builder has continued to be an evolving tool with every Salesforce release. Now, the list for Process Builder features in Summer 16 may be small, but this impact is huge. In Summer 16, you can now execute actions on multiple criteria. This means that you can designate certain processes and criteria trees to continue evaluating down to the next criteria. So admins can consolidate some of the processes you may have for single objects. So, and if you have many, for example, if you have many processes on how to evaluate a large deal, now those multiple processes that operate on one deal or one opportunity can be consolidated into one single process because you can continue on and evaluate multiple times through the different criteria trees and execute multiple different types of actions. But let's take a look at how this tool actually works in Salesforce. So I'm back in Lightning Setup. And I'm going to go to my process builder now. If we imagine I'm a big process builder user already and we replaced our big deal alert in Salesforce with processes um, when we got process builder last year and we've built multiple processes to manage large deals. One of which is uh, an alert for maybe all large deals that are closed one and maybe one uh, an alert for all deals that are closed and open. So what we are able to do with this new process builder tool is actually consolidate those multiple processes into one. So if we imagine previously maybe we had a process that ran every time a large deal was closed lost because it was important that we evaluate internally what happened and, and learn from that. We also had an entirely different process that ran every time a large deal was closed one. And maybe we had an entirely different process that alerted the teams when there just was a large deal that was open. 
Now, all of those processes can be contained within one. So we have here a process that runs on opportunities. And this process runs on opportunities. And the first criteria is to evaluate, is this a large deal? So this isn't evaluating the stage or the close status. This is evaluating, is this a large deal? Now, for every large deal, we want there to be a notification, let's say. We want there to be something that goes out on chatter for that deal that lets everyone know that this is a large deal and maybe loops in the appropriate management parties because we are using chatter very actively. Now, with Summer 16, previously, this would just automatically have stopped. It would have said, okay, it's a large deal, stop. And if it's false, continue on and evaluate the next criteria tree. But now, you can say, evaluate the next criteria, and it'll go on to the next criteria tree and say, okay, it's true, it's a large deal, but then also, is that deal one? And we have the filter there for if it's one. And when the deal is one, we have maybe a project follow-up that's assigned to our project team to ensure that they're onboarded correctly. Now, if that is false and the deal is lost, then we want to have a lost deal review scheduled automatically. So we have those various steps that, again, previously would have been um, required three different entire processes, and now we can have it all contained within one. We go ahead and activate this process. So if I go back to my opportunities, and see this in action, if we say maybe we'll make this deal larger and then close it and see what happens. So when this deal is moved to be larger and also goes to closed one, we click save, then the criteria associated with that first step of create an alert and the criteria associated with the next, or the actions associated with the next step of criteria, which is closed one, both will be executed. So that's a huge win for, again, having power in your processes, being able to consolidate multiple processes for an object in one place. We've scheduled our project follow-up. We have also can see the notification that went out for large deal alerts. So again, for those of you that are already um, process builder rock stars, this is such a big win for us. Now, Mike shared his tips for getting started with every release, and we shared some of our favorite features in this release, but where can you find all of the feature details and links we mentioned? Everything you need to get ready for this release and all future releases can be found at this website here, salesforce.com slash customer resources slash releases slash summer 16. Now, this will be posted to our uh, Salesforce admins webinars group, so don't worry if you can't write this down very quickly. Um, all of the links and references that we've been discussing will definitely be posted to that success community group. Um, so that's the best place to go to locate this information we've talked about today. And we want to hear from you, our awesome admins on the line, at Dreamforce 16. It's coming up fast, registration is now open, and we'd like you to submit a session idea for the chance to come to Dreamforce this year and share how you built an awesome app for your company, maybe how you deployed mobile, if you have favorite trips for formulas or awesome dashboard creation, or how you're using Lightning. Um, please submit your session idea at admin.salesforce.com slash present df16. And we'd love to hear from you and meet you at Dreamforce 16 and for you to share your insider tips and to share what you've learned as an awesome admin um, at Dreamforce. So, Mike, do we have any questions coming up on the admin webinar group? We do, Leanne. We have a lot of questions coming in. Um, and we're diligently, if you can't hear us in the background, typing. Mm -hmm. So uh, I want to I address a few of them. Um, the first one... For those of you that haven't joined previous Essential Habits webinars or heard me talk about the term SABWA, uh, the question came in, what is SABWA? And so I'm going to take that one, Leanne, unless you want to run with it, but SABWA is Salesforce Administration by Walking Around. Uh, and you can sign up for our Essentials webinar. Uh, it's done every month, and it's really the things that Salesforce admins need to be doing 
on a daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, and even yearly basis. So Savoir is one of those daily habits of either coming in early or maybe grabbing lunch 15-20 uh, minutes with a user and just seeing how they interact with Salesforce, what their job is like on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, you can do this in person, so if you have a large company and you work on site, um, you could go down to your inside sales team, your marketing team, or you could do it virtually, uh, hang out with some of your field sales people and see what their day-to-day -day is like. And this is a great time to have a conversation with them around how they enter information in the sales force and perhaps some of the features they would like to see. And now, what would they want to see on their home page? So that was the first question that came in. And then overwhelming popularity uh, was, do we need to have a license for the data.com uh, autofill feature? And you don't, but you do need to enable that. So Leanne, let's see, let's jump to a question for you which is shared contacts. Uh, is shared contacts available in both Classic and Lightning? The ability to have multiple accounts for a contact, yes. Yes, multiple, yep. Cool, so that one came in. Uh, and then we talked about calendars. Uh, so we talked about creating calendars, the campaign calendar, and we can choose any standard or custom object for those calendars. Uh, can we share those calendars between users? I believe that you can. I actually have to go ahead and click through it some more. I believe that you can because I think you can. It, it's the same as if you're creating like a team calendar with users in Salesforce Classic. I'd have to play with that a little bit. Yeah, and one of the questions that came up is where is it displayed? And it's actually displayed on the calendars tab in Lightning because that's where you go to create it. So it's super easy. Um, and if you haven't already signed up for a pre-release org, we will put the link to that in the chatter group uh, and everywhere else for you to find it. That's a really great way to get your hands on with these features. It's how we got up to speed with the release notes. Um, so let's see, what other question did we have come in? The Oh, so back to contacts and multiple accounts. Um, can we customize that, Leanne? I saw that you could choose the, uh, I think it was role, and you chose influencer for the person in your demo. Can we change that list? Um, I actually don't know the answer to that one. Um, I know that you can customize what's displayed in the related list. Um, I'd have to, it's something that's worth clicking around and playing with. I know right now they've got the same, you know, kind of default eight values or relationships set up. I don't know if you can change that. I, I do see one question actually about the customized object though that I'd like to take just from the, the go to the yeah. chat. Um, the question is can you edit the default tabs on an object so to make the details tab the default? And the answer to that is yes. When you're in the app builder, so we were really focused on moving around the components and adding new standard and custom components, but when you're in that customized record page like for an opportunity. Um, if you click on the tab area, you can see then on the right panel the tabs that are available, and you can actually place tabs within tabs as well. So you can change the order of the tabs, so the first one will be the default, um, and then you can also determine what tabs are included. Hope that answers that question. Yep, and we also have the ability with Spring 16 to create custom navigation menus and lightning, so similar, yeah. similar question. Yeah, so in spring, and that was um, really exciting, so in assigning, um, assigning that out by profile, so in spring, we were using in this demo the um, default lightning navigation menu on the left, and that's where we were accessing um, accounts and, and contacts and clicking through that information, but you do have the ability in Spring 16 and Lightning to also customize that for your end users so you can deliver that full customized experience between home page and sidebar navigation. So Leanne, um, I'm an admin and I don't know how to write code and that map that you showed of the US by accounts and states, that was like overwhelmingly popular on social. Uh, do I have to like hire a developer to do that, or how did you make that show up on the home page? I installed that on the App Exchange. So um, there are a lot of free components 
on the App Exchange free and paid. There's many great components um, on the App Exchange for components. So if you go to App Exchange in the search on the top, it's set by default to apps, but if you change that drop down to components, just like you're used to looking at apps, you can look at components and see um, components that are for different areas of the business, like data visualization or marketing. You can also see components that are popular or free. And there's also a lot of components that are out there by Salesforce Labs, which are free unmanaged components. Um, so I encourage you, as you're getting your orgs and, and, and playing with you know, the ability to customize, there's opportunity-specific components, like opportunity health check visualizations that are all included on the opportunity or on the app exchange for components. And so you said app exchange for components, does that mean it's only available in Lightning? Um, yeah, the components that we showed and the ability to customize the home screen that way is only available in Lightning. Um, if you're looking to create a, a mobile only page, um, you can use components for creating like a mobile app page. Um, but really the environment, you know, when we're talking about like opportunity specific components like that health check um, type app or we're talking about customizing the home page, that component framework is part of Lightning. So when you turn on Lightning for your users and you get access to that entire new set of tools for visualization that you can combine, right, for your users. Because in the past, when we wanted to say have a custom home page, you either had to rewrite the entire page in Visual Force or you had to you know, have a developer do it custom for you. But now with this tool, with the ability to do the drag and drop customization, you can combine maybe different components that you've created or that you've gotten from the App Exchange or from um, ISVs that you work with. You can combine those to create the perfect fit for your end user. Um, so the demo you gave on Process Builder was great. And I think the ability to execute next action is um, causing a lot of people to have some really cool ideas and a lot of questions. So mm -hmm. when you're building out your process that you did, can we have it, does it only just evaluate the next action or will it continue to evaluate actions throughout the entire process? So it will evaluate the, so okay, if you had like with the opportunity example, it, if it's true, so if your opportunity is being passed through that first criteria, which was, is it a large deal? If it's true, then you have the option for that criteria tree that once it finishes that criteria, it either goes on or it stops. And so if it was false, then if it was not a large deal, then it would, you know, kind of continue on through the process. Um, and so you would still need to apply you know, just like today when you're building your processes and you, you know, sit down and think about the order in which you would want your criteria to evaluate, you'd still want to sit down and think about which one should be at the end, if that makes sense. Like, so at what point would you like it to stop? Or you can also have some of the criteria where it stops and then have additional the criteria you know, below that in the tree where it does continue on. Okay. And there was a question I'll take that came in around news and account insights. And if you have anything to add, Leanne, let me know. But somebody asked, what's the difference between account insights and news? And news is actually a new tab that's coming in summer 16 that gives you all of the news based on your accounts and opportunities that you viewed. Accounts insights is actually the component that lives on your home page, uh, which is real similar. It gathers the same information. Uh, news just gives you a full page. So it's of like opening up the entire newspaper. Awesome. And we did have um, a response. So thank you, uh, Jeff Alvarez, for taking the time to test out if you can change the roles on contacts. It looks like um, one of our awesome admins on the line tested that, and it looks like you can. So I encourage you to go and, and start playing with that as well. OK. And then we'll take uh, the last question is, uh, with the summer release specific to Lightning, do we have the ability to export reports to Excel? And yes, we do. We actually can export reports as files from the Lightning experience. Um, so we can go ahead and put the link in the file or in the chatter group for that, which is really cool. I know that people have asked for that, and it was available in Classic. So just a reminder, if you are in the chatter group, the admin webinars 
group, continue to ask questions. We will dive deeper into the release notes for you. And if you haven't already signed up for the essential habits for Salesforce admins, please do so. We talk about fun things like Sabwa and having coffee with your users, which coincidentally is a new post that went out today, which I think is pretty fantastic. So with that, enjoy reading your summer release notes. Thank you everyone for joining.